final part of my question asks me to find some compass errors. We're asked for the gyro error. Now that, that's actually quite straightforward. You can see we've got the gyro bearing of the sun of 096, and then we've got a true bearing of the sun of 094.9. So we can see immediately that there's a difference of 1.1 degrees there. Um, and the gyro bearing is higher than the true bearing, which means our gyro is high. It's 1.1 degrees high. So my gyro error I can actually um, state quite easily. And I'm just going to put this down at the bottom here. So that's, that's very straightforward. The next bit requires us to think a little bit about the other information we've got because we're asked for a, a compass bearing. Now there's no compass bearing given in the question, but there is a gyro heading and there's a magnetic compass heading. And by compass we're referring to the magnetic compass here. In order to make sense of this, we have to think about what our compass um, is actually doing. So this plate represents the compass card and the radar plotting sheet represents all the true bearings around the outside. Now if it's the case that our magnetic compass is deflected to the west, you can see that all of the corresponding, the, the compass values would correspond to the, the actual bearings are going to be artificially high. So that's where the idea of error west compass best comes from. Um, likewise, if the compass card is deflected to the east, you can see that all the values that would actually show on the compass are going to be artificially low, which is why we say error east, compass least. But this still doesn't help us if we don't actually have a, a compass bearing um, in order to compare with the true bearing. And the key to getting this is looking at the gyro heading and the magnetic compass heading. You can see that the gyro, it shows 200. The magnetic compass is actually showing 203.5. So what we know is that any bearing that we take with our magnetic compass is going to be 3.5 degrees higher than that which is on the gyro compass. So let's have another look um, at the plate and plotting sheet. Imagine that all of these on the outside, rather than true bearings, let's say these are the, the gyro bearings. And let's say that the plate represents the magnetic compass bearings. Now we've got a heading of 200 by gyro. So our gyro heading is something like in this direction. Our magnetic compass doesn't quite match up with that. We've actually got a slightly higher value for magnetic compass. So we can see that the compass card is actually deflected to the west um, to give us a higher value for our, our compass heading. Um, and it's been deflected by 3.5 degrees compared with our gyro. Now don't forget the gyro has actually also got an error on it in this case. So um, our, our compass error isn't actually 3.5 degrees um, west. It's just that it's showing a heading that's 3.5 degrees um, west compared with the, the gyro. But if we know that our compass heading is three and a half degrees higher than our gyro heading, then can we not also say that our magnetic compass bearing of the sun is going to be three and a half degrees higher than the gyro bearing of the sun? In which case we can actually say that that 096 for the gyro compass would actually show 099.5 on the magnetic compass. So we can actually say 099.5, we've simply added the three and a half degree difference that we've seen between the gyro and magnetic compass onto the gyro bearing of the sun to get a compass bearing of 099.5. And this means we can actually find a compass error now because we've got to find the difference between 094.5, which is the true bearing, and 099.5, which is the compass bearing. And we can see if we subtract 094.5 from 099.5, we're left with 4.6 and we have to name this and we're going to name it east or west and remember if the compass card's deflected to the west it artificially inflates the size of the the bearing that we take with the compass and if the compass card is deflected to the east it makes it actually lower than it ought to be so the fact that the compass bearing is higher this time it means that we've got a deflection of our compass card to the west so a westerly compass error 
error west, compass best, compass bigger. Um, so it's a westerly compass error. Because we have that compass bearing, we can also use our variation to work out our deviation. Now there are a couple of ways you could do that. If you've got the overall compass error and you know the variation is 6 degrees west, you can simply say, well if the variation is 6 but overall we only have 4.6, something is working in the opposite direction against the variation to give us that overall compass error and that thing is deviation. Deviation will have to be easterly in order to reduce that 6.0 to 4.6. So if we simply find the difference between 6 and 4.6, it will give us the deviation. And we know that that deviation is east because it's acting against that variation. Let's just test that um, against this process here. We can actually work through from the true bearing, applying the variation, to find the magnetic heading, which is basically the direction of magnetic north, and then look at what the difference between the direction of magnetic north and the, what the compass actually says is, and that will be our deviation. The difference between these two values is 1.4, so we're going to expect our deviation to come out as 1.4 degrees east. So let's have a look. If our true bearing is 094.9, and we know our compass bearing is 099.5, our variation is 6 degrees west and remember that because we're going from true to compass you're actually going to add anything that's west and subtract anything that's east as you go down so initially we're going to add this 6.0 degrees which means we end up with 100.9 as our magnetic um, bearing that's basically in relation to the direction of magnetic north but then we've got this extra amount of deflection from deviation that's going to actually give us our compass heading. Now you can see that the compass is lower than the magnetic. So just to reiterate that we're going to add anything that's west and subtract anything that's east as we move between the true bearing and the compass bearing, we know here whatever it is is going to have to be east because it has to be a subtraction to get us from 100.9 to 099.5. And if you subtract 099.5 from 100.9, you come out with 1.4, which is exactly what we said was the difference between the compass error and the variation. So something, the deviation is affecting that variation to mean overall it's only 4.6 west, and that thing is a deviation of 1.4 degrees to the east. So we've got our gyro error, we've got our compass error, and we've got our deviation.